On today's DAS tutorial, I'm going to be um, I'm going to be responding to a couple of questions that I've received recently uh, regarding loading in um, extra content, especially extra characters in DAS Studio. And at the end, I'm going to include a quick bonus where I'm going to show you how to create kind of a new character model by blending character models together. And this is similar to a technique that we've done before, but we haven't done it in quite this way. So that's going to be coming at the end of the video. All right, so first of all, I've received a lot of questions lately about loading in uh, second and third party content. Um, so a lot of the content that I have is directly from the DAS 3D store. Some of it is from third party sites, such as Renderosity. That's one of my favorite ones to use. But when loading in a character, it's important to remember that most of the characters that you use are going to have, or many of the characters you use, are going to have a base character. So for instance, um, there is a character that is a very, very generic character um, that is made by the makers of Daz 3D, um, uh, the makers of Daz Studio, and that is the Genesis line of figures. Um, so right now, if you download Daz, it comes with Genesis 3 and Genesis 8, and then very recently they released Genesis 8.1. And the Gen Genesis 8 figures um, are just a little bit higher quality and have some extra features that the Genesis 3 figures don't have. So one of the cool things about these is that content creators can use these figures as a base to create other models and other figures. So they can load them into a piece of 3D modeling software like Blender or ZBrush or one of these, and then they can kind of sculpt around it to create a different character. So I'm gonna show you real quick a couple of different things. So right now I've got Daz Studio open, and I'm in my smart content, and then up here you'll notice I've got two uh, tabs, files and products. So files will list the individual files, like the individual characters and everything that you have um, available to use in your library. And then you also have products, and that's going to list them by product. So it's kind of kind of difficult to explain, but I'll show you what I mean in a moment. Like here's my product view, and I'm gonna pull up my figures, and it shows me all of the products that I have installed currently uh, that are directly from the, uh, these are all from the DAS store. So notice on a lot of these, it will say the name of the character for, and then the name of the base model. For instance, Andrea for Genesis 8 female, Anna Lucia for Genesis 8 female. Um, then I have other ones such as Aubrey HD, or I'm sorry, Audrey HD for Bridget 8, Jade for Team Josie 8, um, etc. So basically what that means is whatever it is for, that is the base model. So for these models, you generally have to have the base model installed in order for these models to be able to load in because they are a morph of that model. They are based on that model. Um, so since, since uh, Daz 3D comes with Genesis 8 female, as long as you are, or the Genesis 8 figure rather, male and female, as long as you're upgraded to the current version, um, you should be able to load all of those models in no problem. Now, when you load those in, you don't have to load them in on top of the Genesis 8 model. You can just load in that character and everything will happen automatically. You don't have to load in Genesis 8, then load in this character on top of it. That makes sense. Um, so all you have to do is load in that one character, but you have to have the Genesis 8 model. Then other ones, such as, you know, this one, Anna HD for Victoria 7, you just have to load in that one model, but it will only work if you have Victoria 7 installed. It's dependent upon on that base model. So whenever you're buying products, always, always check that out um, if it says for something or when you're looking at the store page, it'll tell you if there are any other products that are required in order to use that asset. So usually the ones that I have that are made with a certain base model, I get most of those from bundles. Bundles are a great way to save money. They're generally more expensive because you're getting several products in one, but you do save money in the long run by doing that. So um, if you want to get a new model uh, that's coming out and they have a package available or a bundle, then you can get that base model, several morphs, usually about three or four morphs, um, based on that model, plus you can generally get clothing, accessory, hairs, uh, hair, uh, um, hair assets, and some different things like that. All right, um, and whenever you use third-party assets, check that out as well. Like I've got all mine stored in my content library, and I want to talk for just a moment about the installation libraries. So you can see I've got a smart content tab and then a content library tab, and I've been getting a lot of questions about how to load third-party assets that you don't get from the DAS store 
into the smart content pane. And with this, I've had varying degrees of success, so I'll kind of show you what I do. So first of all, I typically use the DAS Install Manager, which again comes free with every DAS Studio installation. And that's how I generally install my assets. Now, this one is probably going to be deprecated at some point because they have a new system out. I believe it's called DAS Studio Connect. Um, now where they're expecting you to install and download all of your software through that. However, um, I'm kind of set in my ways. I've gotten used to the install manager, so I like using it, and I'm probably going to use it until it's officially deprecated and they no longer support it anymore. But until then, I'm totally cool using it. So um, this one will automatically download into your default folder. And the way to check that out is to go to, so whenever you download anything, like I said, from the DAS store or through DAS Connect or anything, it'll automatically install it for you and it will automatically put it in your smart content pane. So if you get anything from a third party store, you're probably gonna to have to download it directly from them and install it yourself. In my experience, they always come in uh, some kind of a compressed file, such as a .zip or a .rar, R-A-R file that you can open with a program like WinRAR. Uh, or um, 7-zip uh, is another good one for unzipping files, and I think that also works with .rar files, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but uh, once you uh, once you receive those files, sometimes you can take the zipped file, the, the compressed file, don't uncompress it or anything, and just drop it into your DAS installation file, and sometimes it will automatically show up in the smart content pane. However, again, in my experience, that isn't always the case. Sometimes you do have to install it manually. So for instance, if I go to my uh, DAS, uh, my uh, content library tab, I have my DAS 3D library, which that's my default library that all of my smart content shows up in. And then I have a separate folder just called my library. And that's where I put my most of my third party assets, especially the ones that for whatever reason don't show up in my smart content pane. So the way to check where those libraries are for you, because they might be different on your system, we can go to Edit, Preferences, and then go to Content, and then go to Content Directory Manager. And here it shows us the ones you want to pay attention to are DAS Connect Data, uh, the DAS Studio formats, and then Poser formats. Poser is another software that's similar to DAS 3D, but it's a paid software. It's not a free download like DAS is. Um, but uh, DAS can import some Poser assets. So this is where your different things will go. The DAS Connect data, that should be your default library for all of your um, DAS assets that you get from the DAS store. DAS Studio formats can include that library um, it can also include the content library, and you can have multiple different folders in there, but all you have to do is click to expand one of those. You can add a directory, or just see where the directories are, like wherever you need to, wherever you need to install things. But that is where you should install your third-party uh, third content. All right, that about covers all I wanted to say about those. And the final thing that I was going to do is to show you how you can get a new character morph by blending character morphs together. So I'm gonna go ahead and load one in. Um, so as I said before, um, different characters are based on different base models. And what I'm gonna do is show you how to load a character in and then blend different body types in from different specific characters. Now, this will only work if they have a compatible base model. For instance, if I load in Daphne for Olympia 8, she will be able to use morphs from any character that is also based on Olympia 8. Or if I load in a character that is based on Genesis 8, then she'll be able to use any morph that is based on Genesis 8. And there are far more characters based on Genesis 8, so depending on your library, you'll probably have more options available for those characters. But to start, I'm going to go ahead and load in one of my Olympia characters. So I'm going to down, uh, load in Daphne. That'll take just a moment, so I will cut this part, but um, let's go ahead and load her in. All right, there we go. Now I've got my Daphne for Olympia 8 dropped in my scene. I went on ahead and dressed her and put on some hair. And next we're gonna go over to the right and we're gonna be sure that she is selected in our scene. And here, actually let me go back to the base of this real quick. So this is what my base menu is um, under parameters. I've got, let's see, Daphne, I've got eyelashes, uh, and then this is all of her clothing, top, 
shorts, and then the hair. So we're going to go to Daphne, our base model. And then under here, um, I've got a section called full body. And actually, no, we're not going to use that. We're going to use people. There we go. So this is a list of all of the different body morphs that I can use for her. So this is going to include, include all of the people that we can use regardless of the base character. So if we go to full body, there we go. And it actually looks like I misspoke a moment ago. I thought we could only use the Olympia figures, um, but it looks like we can use pretty much anything. Um, Olympia might be based on Genesis 8, and that might be why we have all of these options. I'll have to check on that, but that is not what I expected, but that is a pleasant surprise, though. So now we have a lot more options that we can do uh, than I was at first expecting. Um, so here, I will give you a quick example. Let's go, let's see if I can find someone that has a drastically different body. Or actually, here's the Olympia 8 body. So that's the base model. And you can drag any of these sliders up and down. That one doesn't change a whole lot because our body is similar to Olympia. Uh, let me find somebody that's way different, like maybe a younger model. Uh, let's see. There we go, let's try Tasha 8. There we go, so you can see as I increase that slider, she automatically gets taller and thinner as it applies that different body type. We'll try a couple more of these. So you can see by doing these and blending them together in different ways, then you can get different morphs and different effects. So that's another way that you can further customize your character. And then down here, there are other things that we can do. Uh, clothing, let's see, there's fantasy and sci-fi. Um, let's see what else we can do. There we go, this is what I was looking for. So if we go down to head morphs, we can change her head shape and facial features. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can see that. And this will can drastically change the way that she looks. Uh, let me find one real quick. Let's do, see I've got lots of different options in, options in here. Here we go, there's my Sakata 8 uh, figure. Yeah, that's changing the top of her eyes. That one's not super drastic. Let me see what else I can find in here. So here we go. We can give her elf ears if we want. And again, to different varying degrees. And of course, what options you have on here is going to depend upon which characters you have installed. So I have a character called Circe um, who has um, elf ears that you can apply to her. So those, um, those are only going to apply, again, for the characters that you have installed. So here we go. There's Teen Josie 8 uh, elf ears. Teen Kaylee, yeah. So again, really cool effects you can get by that. So by blending these different sliders together, that's just another way that you can morph your character and create something entirely new that uh, may not have been originally intended. All right, so if you got something out of this video, if you learned something today, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Check out my other channel, which I will link to above, where I do Python tutorials and tutorials for RenPy, a visual novel engine where you can use your, uh, your dad's figures and scenes in order to actually create something cool. And that will just about do us. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Goodbye.